everybody, and welcome to another episode of Good Luck High Five. This is episode 306, and I'm one of your hosts, Maria. I'm another one of your hosts, Megan, and you're listening to a podcast that's for you if you are a person who plays Magic the Gathering. Whether you're hopping online and jamming some games in arena, you're sitting down at the kitchen table, or you're heading out to a local GP, PPTQ, or just, you know, Friday Night Magic. On today's show, we're going to tell you all about the news that you can use this week in Magic. That's right. And if you can't use the news, you can return it for a refund. That's right. Yeah. We accept returns. Yeah. So we do accept returns Mm -hmm. on the news. You'll have to send it in an envelope with another stamped and self-addressed envelope inside. Inside. So that we can send you your return, which will be in the form of minutes. Yeah. And on your envelope, the self-addressed stamped envelope, inside the envelope that you send us, the stamp needs to be a forever stamp, but from the future. Because yeah. who knows what forever means in five years. Yeah, you know that's what I mean? true. What a weird... <laughs> it's like, that's, that's almost like a weird conceptual thought, but instead I think it's just ridiculous. But anyways... Because I was thinking about in the past how they would always raise stamp prices before the forever yes. stamps. And then it was kind of like, oh, well, I'm going to buy this however much 45 cent stamp. And I'm sure it'll be good for a couple of years. And then it no, was worthless. No, it was like worthless so quick. Yeah, very quickly after that. But I think the point of a forever stamp is, you know, if it says forever That's on it. That's what we think today. But what will tomorrow's forever be? Do you know what I'm saying? But it'll just be a stamp <laughs> that says forever on it still. Don't don't think too much about it. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, besides deep stamp philosophy. Yes. Today, yes, yes. We've also uh, in the news, we've got some Ravnica Allegiance predictions. Yay! I love doing these. These are definitely very informed. Oh, yes. Very skillful. Yes. Lots of thought. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah, but, but d- these are predictions you can bet on. You- <laughs> Put your good old fashioned money down on these ones because yeah. they will happen. Despite, you know, the hours and hours of thought we've put into these, Megan, uh, we have had several <laughs> predictions come yes. true in the past. It's so true. So don't we'll count us see, out. Yeah. Don't count us out. And yeah, this set coming out next year, we're very excited already for it. So yeah. we'll see if we can hit any nails on that proverbial head. We're also going to take a look back at Guilds of Ravnica Draft, since that's still up on Arena, Magic Online, and your stores. And, well, you might have some free time coming up in the holiday season when you don't have to work. So maybe you're jamming some drafts and you want to know, hey, I haven't been playing for a little while. What's the what what on how this draft format has evolved over time? Demir, is it still good? Boros, is it still good? Celestia, is it still the worst? (laughs) Well, we'll give you all of that update and more! And we've got Flavor Text Theater, which we haven't actually played in a while. We really haven't. So get excited. Get your pants on. Ooh, do I need to be wearing pants for Flavor Text Theater? I mean, for the show in general. Oh, well, I've got bad news for you. You're going to about to go out on an adventure, and you don't want to begin an adventure without a good pair of pants. That's solid advice. Thank you. I'm wearing tights, though, today. This that is a works. dress. Those is that count. okay? Yes. Okay, great. Bottoms in general. <laughs> some kind of bottom. <laughs> yes, some kind of bottom. <laughs> some sort of tight or trouser. <laughs> hey, just want to let you know that if you want to hang out with us this week, we have a great way to do that. Yeah. We are going to be on twitch.tv slash GLHF magic, streaming our little hearts out on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. It's a week of streams. What? A full week. If a week equals three days. Yeah. If a week was three days, which I'm a big advocate of the work week being three days, yeah. then this is what reality you would face. Okay. Three days is a little extreme, yeah. but like four day <laughs> work true. week just needs to be one no, of four, days. No, four day work week is 100% Correct. what it should be. Yes. Think about your job. Have you ever... In your five days of work, (laughs) if you work a five-day job, uh, have you ever in your five days of work done any more than four days worth of tasks? Yes. And the answer is probably no, unless like you're a doctor, in which case I don't know if this super applies. Okay. Desk job. Yes. We are talking about desk jobs. I'll grant that there are exceptions, but desk jobs. Anyway. Yeah. Side note. Um, yeah, so we're going to be around 2 p.m. on Tuesday. We'll be going to be kicking off our week of streams of week in quotation marks. <laughs> week of streams. <laughs> week of streams. And uh, yeah, just check us out on uh, Twitter at GLHF Magic. Follow us there if you want updates as to when we're going live. You can also go to our stream right now and click on follow, even though we're probably not streaming right now. But who knows? Maybe we are when you're listening to this. Yeah, you never you know. Follow us and you'll find out when we're streaming. And if you play this over 
the stream. Ooh, if you, yes. mute, you mute the stream and Great you play tip. this, it will sync up perfectly. Yeah, it's really spooky. Very spooky. <laughs> it's sort of like the whole Wizard of Oz, Dark Side of the Moon situation. <laughs> and our sweet uh, Good Luck High Five Pro Team hoodies, by the way. Yes, one time only sale one time of those. Offer. We are closing the sale down on this Friday at 9 a.m. Central Daylight Time here in the U.S. So get your orders in before then if you want one. They are some quality hoodies. They have our little GLHF team logo on the front. And then on the back, you can get any, any one name. of the GLHF pros on the back. Yeah. Um, or you can get your own name on the back. So, you know, head on over there. This will be the only print run of those. Yes, we are. We are never doing this ever again. We are never again. doing this ever again. <laughs> so, <laughs> so go in and, and, or, and order them today. Yeah. So before we get started, this has been a lot of befores. Yeah. But maybe, hear me out. What? Maybe we already got started. Maybe we did. Maybe when we started the podcast it is started? when we got started. And we... Wow. I shouldn't be using the phrase before we get started Maybe because when the we starting record, get got already. <laughs> <laughs> you could be right. Yeah. I feel like we're recording something, so maybe we have begun. Exactly. Well, continuing onwards, yes. marching down the long path of this podcast towards the end, which is the end. Anyways, uh, we have a couple of people to thank who are helping us along that journey. Yes. First of all is the patrons, you listeners out there or watchers of these videos and listeners to these podcasts who are chipping in to say, hey, I believe that this is content that has value to me and then I'm going to show it um, by giving as little as $5 a month. Dollar twenty-five an episode is what you're doing right now worth a dollar twenty-five to you. I, I hope really so. hope so. I really hope so. I really hope so. Think about how little you're paying per word that we Ooh, say. The word value very high, very high. Yes, honestly, you're paying about. You're paying like a little over a cent per minute, which is nothing. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and you're paying fractions of a cent per word. So go to patreon.com slash GLHF magic and click on that little subscribe button. Whatever tier you want to sub at is totally fine for us. You can even do less than five a month. Uh, we have a lot of people who sub at a dollar a month and that's totally cool too. Any amount really honestly does help. And in this final month of the year, we like to have a nice big Patreon push. We're trying to get to 700 and we're uh, below that mark. So Go over there today and help us hit that number uh, and be added to the count. And we'll be uh, forever grateful, really. Yeah. So we want to say thank you to Card Kingdom, Card Kingdom 2. You can head over to cardkingdom.com slash GLHF. No magic on the end of that one. Just GLHF. And buy any of their stuff and they'll get it shipped to you very, very quickly and with great customer service. And if you ask for a sticker in your order, they'll give you a little good luck high five sticker, which I think is super cool. Sometimes they do to uh, custom token requests, so you can include that in the notes of your offer. And really, they just have a ton of really great quality merchandise that you can buy. Singles, you can buy boxes, that kind of thing. Pre-order anything you might want to get. You can draft with your friends. You can get their new Lumeria oh, I love it. draft, which is their custom draft that they made. It's so cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, so yeah, head on over there. Check it all out. Yeah, and I want to let you know, too, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash goodluckhighfive. Coming up this week, if you can hang out with us live during our streams, of course, mm -hmm. you can always watch the VODs on Twitch if we're not playing music. Um, but we're going to put them up on YouTube. We've got a battle from last week that we did with Singleton. Me, me and Megan battled on stream. You can go and watch that on our YouTube channel right now. We played six decks. Six. Six Singleton six. decks. Six and... They get really silly. Yeah, I right. love it. I was going to say towards the end, but no, honestly, right in the, the middle, <laughs> from the beginning, they begin silly, get sillier, and maybe end the most reasonable. Yeah, yeah, that's our that's normal That's the trajectory. Curve. But it's, they're su it's a super fun uh, thing that we've been doing. We're going to do it more on stream uh, coming yeah. up this week, too. And Singleton is happening right now on Arena. Yeah. So. You can get some good ideas for yeah, that. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Hey everyone, do you want to know what's the what what in the happening world of magic? I do. Well, we've got that for you. First off, there was a GP this weekend in Shizuoka. It was standard Ooh. in Golgari 
finally did what it's been threatening to do <laughs> since the very beginning and won a gosh darn tournament. You know what? It's so funny. Like, all of these tournaments, Golgari has just been creeping into the top eight yes. as Golgari has want to do. Yes. And finally managed to take finally, one Finally, it was just like, this is what I've been dreaming of. So let's take a look at what we had in the top eight here. First and foremost, uh, Golgari. <laughs> Golgari, yep. Um classic Golgari list. Just got control yeah, in the nice. top eight. All right. Not a surprise there. Celestia Tokens made it That's all the a way surprise. to the top eight. Yay! That's a big surprise. I love this deck, so I'm happy to yeah. see it uh, Four do well. Four sapling migrations. Yeah, man. The little sap, they, nice. they really could. Yeah. To a Johnny adversary of tyrants. Oh, I love a Johnny. All right. No surprise. Uh, another copy of Celestia Tokens made in the top eight. Two whole copies? Yay. Wow. Well done. Well done. Uh, another Golgari mid range, yep. a Golgari third Golgari mid range, a fourth Golgari mid range, and Boros Agro. Oh, okay. <laughs> Four whole copies of Golgari mid range. Wow, half of the top eight. Yeah. You know, it's not a surprise. A lot of people have been really pushing this deck, saying, "You know what? It didn't do well at the Pro Tour, or whatever, for whatever reason." You know, insert your own reason there. But it's the best deck, and we've got to keep playing it. And here we see the results. And here we results. see, yeah. It yeah. got there. It got there. Piloted by who again? Let's take a look at who won the whole thing. Which was, this, which was the winner of this of these many Golgari mid-ranges? Who did win? Hold on. I'm trying to figure this out. <laughs> at Sushi Nak Nakashima. Nice job. All right. Ooh. One of those four Golgari mid-range. I like the headline. Atsuki Nakashima finds finality. Oh, <laughs> that's great. Solid one. Well done. All Chapman right. Sim for that headline. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's solid. He was the most mid-range of them all. Yes. <laughs> Which is really something we can Which all is, aspire yeah. to as Golgari mages. <laughs> oh, I hope I'm the most I want to be the most mid-range. Yes. All right. Second item of news is a little bit of a spoiler about Ravnica Elysian. So if you don't want to hear absolutely anything about if that you're set, like, don't, don't show me what's coming. I like to enter the future eyes closed <laughs> and hands out so I can just feel what's coming. <laughs> if that describes you adequately, yeah. please fast forward in this show about... I don't know. Let's say three minutes to be safe. Wow, that's a lot. It's probably not going to be that much. But well, but it might be. It might be. Do you know what? What? Just listen. <laughs> Just like, it's not that big of a spoiler. It's not that big. It's about the story. Yes. And so what we learned was because of several RPTQs this past weekend. Yes, there were play mats and uh, there were some boxes that had different art on them. Yes. Um, including... Kaya. <gasps> Kaya is going to be in Ravnica Legion. Yes. She's, uh, so she's cool. obviously part of the Orzov yes. in this. And she is, she seems to be yeah. perhaps buddying up to Bolas. Yeah, she definitely looks like she's been taken over by the dragon's power, purple glowing eyes, and all the rest of it. Wait, purple glowing eyes are just a planeswalker thing. I mean, just look. What I'm makes show you, you think? I'm going to show Maria. you. Maria. Tell me what makes you think that she is Bolas. She just has this look on her face that's like, I want to bow down to a dragon king. What? She does not look like that. Look at that. No. What she do you looks mean, like no? she looks like I'm in charge of the Orzov. I've I'm getting a definite evil vibe right there. Wow. Okay, well Maria and I are at odds over this. <laughs> I was just gonna say that we know Kaya's gonna be there. Oh, and yeah. that she's she's allied with the Orzov. Yes. Uh, I, well, and in my great. mind, she looks like she's standing in front of the Orzov syndicate just being what like What is this evil purple mist? That's just planeswalker mist. <laughs> You, if you have a problem with Planeswalker Mist, call 1-800-MIST-FREE for That's new pills. too many numbers. Is it? Mist-FREE <laughs> is eight digits. <laughs> this isn't a scam. <laughs> it's Mist-FREE, but free only has a one e. e in it. Yeah. Mist-FREE. <laughs> call 1-800-MIST-FREE if uh, you have problems with Planeswalker. What did I call it? Okay. So strong, Missed. strong opposition between Maria and I You don't I think here. she's evil in this? No. She was no, she wasn't evil. She's like, you know, she's no, running I'm her saying own. she was corrupted by Bolas. I some don't know. Way. I think that she's still running her own gambit over here. So you're going to say Orzov is not going to be on Bolas' side. Orzov might be. <laughs> but their guild leader has, is the reason that they are. Because, oh. right? Is that true? 
Maybe that's not necessarily true because no. I don't think Nim is it likes uh, Bolas. See? Anyway. Okay. So you think Kaya might is good, but Orzov might be bad. Yeah. Okay. I think that Kaya transcends good and bad. Ooh. I think that she just is. She's, <laughs> she's like a, she always had like a little bit of right, like the yeah, free agent for, vibe she, to her. She, she, she stabbed King. She stabbed a King. Yeah, exactly. But like, you know. That's my take on okay, it. Okay, there's okay. Kaya. Domri Rod, also going to be in it. Yes, Domri Rod. And we do, I, I think we can make not a very big leap at saying that Gruel is behind Bolas. What? Wow. You are just wow. running around. I thought this was general knowledge. General knowledge? Reporting for duty. <laughs> general, the general wouldn't report to very many people. <laughs> if anything, other people uh. report to general knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who do generals report to? I don't know military ranks. I mean, the commander in chief. Um, the president? Admirals. Admirals, okay. I believe, no. What's the word that I'm looking for? Is uh, admiral the word that I'm looking for? Chief petty officer. <laughs> no, what's the one? That there's general, but there's there's the one above general that's if you're like general. Major, ge- gen- major general. I'm thinking of a captain Minor situation. General. When, no, when there's like... <laughs> When there's captains of boats, you're a boat captain. But if you are captain of more than one boat, then How can you you're be an a admiral of more than one boat. You're in charge of a fleet. If you're in charge of a fleet oh, of boats. Oh, OK. I was going to say, like, they just split your personality and you have no. you on one boat and half Hold of you on. is leading another boat. Who if does you know a general who a general reports, reports to, to, please tweet at us with the hashtag reporting for duty <laughs> okay let's see um okay hold on okay megan's looking up the ranks military yes. ranks right now oh wait this hold is a on. lot this, of information this is a, too much information here i want the command hierarchy yeah that's where chain of command chain of command who's um, at the top the president i assume that's what it means admiral the i said admiral right yeah you did okay admiral of the fleet admiral vice admiral Rear, Rear Admiral, Admiral. <laughs> Commodore, Captain. Commodore, Commodore is the word that I was thinking of. Commodore so- sounds like something that you get in prison for your rations for the week, you know? What? You know where you go to the commissary? That's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> no one listened to anything that we have to say about any of this. Oh, they re- the, uh, so a general reports to a field marshal or general of the army. Okay. Oh, and like the the air force equivalent of a general is a marshal. Okay. Suck an off. air chief marshal, and admiral is in the navy. I would like the title okay. of vice admiral, and I don't want to be promoted above it because vice just sounds cool. Um, I would like to be. An air commodore. Ooh, that sounds very fancy. It really does. Sounds like you have the permission to take over an airplane and fly it wherever you need yes. to. Yes. Well, anyways. Anyway, Kaya Domri Ray yes. also spotted. Domri Ray. What makes you think that he's that the Gruel are evil? Because of the flavor, several flavor texts in this set. Oh. I'm gonna find one for you right okay. now because I happen to remember. I believe it's on Citywide Bust or something like that. Where they talk about the gruel? No, that's Boros. God dang it. What's the one where you kill something with four po- toughness or greater? Call her the culprit. Call her the culprit. I'm, uh, sorry that I can't remember this off the top of my head. No, those are both Boros flavor texts. Uh, riot. Citywide, streetwide, but riot. What is that horrible card nobody plays? I don't know. Just type in riot. Riot. That's going to be a lot of cards. Yeah, it is. Um, street riot. Here it is. This is a Domri flavor text. They said obey and you'll be happy. They said you'll be safe, but we're not safe. We're not happy and we will not obey. Domri Rad. See, that just sounds like he's rebelling against the hierarchy of Ravnica, not Bolas. No, I'm saying he is with Bolas. But what makes you, what about that flavor text makes you think that he's with Bolas? Um... Just because he's an instigator, I guess, like upsetting the peace. But I'm just saying, like, right, you don't have to be. I feel like you're making it into two sides, which is either your Ravnica allied or your Bolas allied. Yeah. But I feel like there's a third one, which is 
like potentially what Domri Rod is, which is like, I don't a believe free agent. Exactly. Well, also just like, I don't believe in like obeying Bolas and I don't believe in obeying Ravnica. I, I want to make, you know, my own. So there's going to be like two sides warring here and one yeah. side's going to be, and the third is going to be like, Hey, because Rav, Ravnica has never been like peaceable, like a peaceable place. No. So I'm just saying, I feel like Domri Rod is kind of one of those people that's like, this city has never served me down with the whole thing. But Bolas is like, well, then come work for me. And Domri Rod's like, I'm not fooled. Oh. That's my... Okay, I'm okay. just saying. That it could, could be. be a thing. It could be for sure. And I feel like Kai is the same way. But we do need to have several people who are in for Bolas this time because we've got to get, you know... Like, we had the guilds from this one. Who's evil Look, in this one? Bolas destroyed all of Amonkhet by his only. That's true. So I feel like he... Does he need... Does he even need help? And he has Vraska, help? doesn't he? He has Vraska for sure. Yeah. He has uh, Ral for sure. Yeah. And who else? Maybe that's enough, right? He can't have too many. Otherwise, it's too easy. <laughs> This has turned into a wow. way more heated debate okay. than I was anticipating. We need to read the story. We need a story time with Megan. Yeah. You All right. I'll work on it. Maybe you have a long flight coming up. <laughs> or the Demir. I, yeah, like, what I about the Demir? I don't know what the Demir's do. No is. one knows. That's kind of their thing, right? Anyway, this was a long yeah. way to say that we saw art, so those characters are probably going to be yes. Planeswalkers. <laughs> Kaya, I'm very excited for a Kaya Planeswalker. Yeah, and Domri will be back. In standard. Yeah, Kaya yes. in standard. That seems pretty yes, sweet. Yes, please. Domri Rod involves okay, creatures, so whatever. I mean, normally I would care about this thing, but he was just such a bad planeswalker before that I just am not into what? it. Was he not One bad? One red green? I mean, what did he see play in standard back then? I wasn't yes. playing standard. In some of the creature decks okay. he did. Right. He wasn't spectacular, but at, Maybe a, I was at just three mana, he was playable. Anyways. Anyway. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> More predictions later. Um, the first rounds of uh, Unlimited ma Ultimate ma Unlimited Masters. I wish. <laughs> I wish that there were. Anyways. Uh, Ultimate Masters. Yes. The first rounds of it have been played. Yeah. The first events. People have them under their belts. So we had a secret agent infiltrating yes. some of the very first Ultimate Masters sealed events. Which were at PAX Unplugged in and Philly this past weekend. That was the Good Luck High Five game guy, Nicholas. Yes. We sent him in there with a mission, and that was to play Unlimited Masters. Excuse me. <laughs> Ultimate Masters. I, God dang it's it. It's my fault. I did it. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> And uh, send us his notes back from how it went. Unlimited Masters is the limited draft version of all the unsets put <laughs> together. Wow, that sounds like it would be chaos. Chaos. So here's his three takeaways. So a lot of uh, local game stores this weekend are going to be holding these drafts or sealed events. So if you want, check them out and here's some tips. Yeah. Tip number one. This set is huge on graveyard interaction, which we talked about last week. So the ability to get cards onto the battlefield from the yard is a real threat. Have a plan, at least in your sideboard, for exiling cards from graveyards. Oh, all right. Great thought. Yeah. Or just hold your removal for things that might come back from graveyards. Yes. Just because it's dead doesn't mean it's dead. Oh, classic magic. So remember that. Number two, Ulamog's Crusher single-handedly wins games. <laughs> yes, I would say well, this has probably yes. always been true. You need to deal with it immediately. At eight mana, you think you you have time to find a threat, but you don't. Or a response, I would I would think he means. With creatures like Athodian and the usual ramping in green, you could see it early, as in turn three or four early. What? That seems three? a little... Three? That seems a little I insane. believe four. Four, I can get Four, behind. I see. Yeah. Okay, and tip number three, enchantments are everywhere, especially heavy in white and red. Consider main decking enchantment hate. If you're green, Wickerbur, how do you say this? Wickerbow? Wickerbow. Elder is an auto-include, maybe even a two-of. It's phenomenally good, gives you a solid body at 4-4, four, four, and you have five mana. It lets you get a 4-4 four, four and removes an enchantment or artifact without evoking, which is necessary sometimes, but always feels bad. Yeah, enchantment removal. So enchantment removal, graveyard hate, and... You're, this is a very powerful set, which is what I'll recap yeah. point number two. So just, you've got to be on your toes at all times. Get those answers. Yeah. Play them. Play your, play your threats. Play your, keep, keep your answers. Have answers in your deck. Yes. And be you know, classic the yard. sealed stuff. Yeah. But yeah, once again, power level very high in these sets. So never really let your guard down because anything can happen. 
in these uh, ultimate in these master sets that you might not be ready for. I don't want to. I don't want to do a long. Ooh. Oh, by the way, if you want to know how long Megan's ooh was last episode, <laughs> we did get it timed. Thank you to everyone who responded. It was around twenty five seconds. Uh, which Megan didn't think was very impressive. No, I don't think it is. <laughs> <laughs> Confirmed. So we'll just have to try and beat it in the future, won't we? Well, okay. <laughs> Before we go on Ultra Pro. <laughs> I, it's so hard not to rhyme when I we talk know. about Ultra Pro. Just I because know. so many things rhyme with Pro. Amongst all their other great qualities... Uh, they have rhyming. Yes. Also. Absolutely. You know, think about where where are you getting all of your magic stuff from? Does it rhyme? And does it rhyme as easily as Ultra Pro? The answer is probably Ultra no. Ultra no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you're looking for literally any kind of magic accessory, are you looking for bags, binders, deck boxes, play mats, dice, you know, other ways to track life? total like abacai yeah, which is different. definitely the plural of abacus i've got this ultra pro life counter here yes. which is an awesome like it's like a beautiful statue athena lady and then you turn it and it goes because it goes on a base and then yeah. it points so amazing stuff it's all like you can find anything from the basic you know kind of play mat or anything like that to the really special like this this is something that it's yeah. a one of a kind life counter item that nobody is going to actually already have which is sometimes a big problem like what can i buy this person they have everything from the, that they have that they like from their hobby well i can assure you they probably don't have this that's right which is pretty cool all right so yeah, Ultra Pro, great place for all the unique items you want to buy somebody for the holidays. And their relic tokens are another one of those yes. things that I think are great stocking stuffers or something like that. For sure. Um, that people love. Ultra Pro, pretty cool. All right, it's time for some Ravnica Allegiance predictions. That's right. We know some things about Allegiance, specifically which guilds are going to be yes. part of it. So we're going to put on our thinking caps and come up <laughs> with some predictions for this that definitely are rooted in magic theory and good game design. FYI, we do not know any of these things to be true, nor do we have no. any inside information whatsoever on what no. could ha possibly happen in this set. Yeah. That's our disclaimer. Wow, you have so many guilds marked as bolus i do <laughs> you believe that everyone is bolus i just maybe i'm just like pessimistic for ravnica right now wow you really are i just think that with all the buildup that's been going into bolus's storyline and all the d destroying he's been doing that if ravnica i don't i feel like they're i feel like they're gonna lose i think something big is gonna happen in the third set you think that ravnica is gonna be gone i don't know Wow. Something is going to upset the apple cart in a major way. That's what I think. Okay. The apple cart being, I don't know. My cabbages. The multiverse. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> what? Why are Megan it's a, it's her a thing, cabbages no. in an apple cart. It's a thing from, anyways, it's from Avatar. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so... Uh, Orzov is where I'm yes. going to start off, and I put Bolas next to it. Yeah, I'm because you think it's Bolas. Um, but look, I'm saying that they're they're even though they are black, they're also white. Like they're yes. white aligned. Yeah, which makes me feel like maybe not, right? Maybe they, it could be. Yeah, I'm not going to discount it entirely. Okay, I'm going to be 95 percent sure that they're evil though. All right, I'll fair enough. I'll be five percent. Yeah. So this is <clears throat> my mechanic prediction. So last time we were in Ravnica and returned to Ravnica, their mechanic was extort, mm -hmm. which was great. I miss extort. I loved it. I loved extort too. Extort, you could pay an extra hybrid mana of either black or white whenever you cast a spell and you would gain a life and an opponent would lose a life. It was so beautiful. It was really nice. Um, but I'm going to up the, I'm basically upping the game on all of my mechanic predictions and that set they were starting in this set, they're going to be straight up stealing. Wow. <laughs> so they've gone over the edge. And, uh, so this mechanic is called steal, which I don't actually know if that's been a word that wizards have, has ever used. I don't think so. The way it works is <laughs> so busted by the way. Uh, so your opponent will tap mana to cast a creature or do whatever. And if you've left mana back, you can tap it in response and tap the creatures, which have the steel mechanic on them and then that mana is banked and it doesn't go away from your mana pool until uh the end of your next turn wait so but <laughs> you, you can't your opponent 
you're essentially having to take a turn off to steal it from your opponent. But if your opponent doesn't play anything, then you don't. Then you can't okay, do it. Okay, I'm gonna fix that so it's not so busted. <laughs> what if you can just you just also get it? What do you mean? Like they are gonna get the, if they tap five mana and you tap five and your steel creature in response. Yeah. You also get five mana. You're not. They also get theirs. But that's like that's not stealing. Yeah, but that's also like. <laughs> Steal More it. workable. Help me steal it. Maybe you can only steal one of it or something. I don't know. I okay. want to steal it. I understand <laughs> you using the word steal here. I want to take it from my opponent yeah. and own it myself. I don't believe like the Orzov are above stealing though. Ooh. They're not common thieves. That's what I'm saying. They've been reduced to their ba- ba- most base instinct. Hmm. Anyway, I, maybe this is impossible to make this mechanic actually fair in Magic because it probably is impossible. I don't know. Maybe one of you out there can help with the, some of these busted mechanics that I've invented. <laughs> Do you have an Orzov prediction? Okay, um, I have a keyword. Okay, great. <laughs> or I have the ability. I don't know what it does yet. I want it to be assassinate. Ooh, um, I like But it. I, don't know, I don't know what it does. Very orzov Yeah, very Orzov. Assassinate. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I think that maybe, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'll think about it. Okay. You think about it. I'm going to talk. There's, that's, there's my prediction is that their keyword will be assassinate. assassinate. Great prediction. I'm going to move on to Rakdos, my favorite guild. And I put Bolas question marks here because. They do seem the most know. likely. They seem very likely to go evil. Yeah. Um, last set. Although maybe they're too hedonistic. They could be. I could see it going either way. Honestly. This entire episode is just point counterpoint where you're like, this is why they could be bullets. And I'm like, and this is why they couldn't. <laughs> um, so last set was unleash, which is one of my favorite mechanics of all time. And a lot of people, you know, are like, Oh, it was far too simple, but that's why I loved it. It was so beautiful. You could choose to have a creature enter the battlefield unleashed and it entered with a plus one, plus one counter and it lost the ability to block. So Mm -hmm. I loved it. So I've upgraded this now. Well, not really. This is very different with my mechanic blood money. And (laughs) well, this would never be a name they would give to a mechanic. I like it. Uh, What you what it does is you can pay life for bonus effects on your creatures or spells as they resolve. So, for example, Exava was a super cool creature we had last time in Return to Ravnica. And I loved her. And for example, you could say pay 10 life. Exava steals five life from your opponent or whatever. I don't mean steal. Uh, Deals five damage. It has to do that in red, I suppose. You're paying 10 life? It's expensive. Wow. Because it needs to really hurt you to be able to do something to your opponent, especially if you're dealing five, which is a pretty big chunk. And it's essentially for free. You want to pay life. Pay life to get bonuses. Because that's what I like about Rakdos is like they're kind of like self-harm to to obtain our objective, which is like unleash losing the ability to block to deal more damage to your opponent. In this case, dealing damage to yourself to get a benefit. Yeah. So that one I think is, you know, the most likely maybe of all of these that I've invented. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Let's see. Uh, What is your hot Rakdos prediction? Um, Okay. This is the dumbest thing I've ever come up with. Great. It's called mortal upgrade. (laughs) Like more like a mortal, mortal wound, upgrade. so it's an upgrade that's gonna eventually kill the creature. Ooh, um, which so is this like is like the aura that you put on stuff, unstable mutation. Yes, exactly. Where I it's love like it. if your creature is like it's a three three for three, um, and it says it's like what did I call it? Mortal upgrade. Mortal upgrade. You can you can give it flying. Yeah. But if you do at the end of your turn, you'll put a minus one, minus one <gasps> counter on it. That's great. Uh, and mortal upgrade can be any kinds it. of ability. And it happens on your at, on your end step that it gets the counter because okay. that way it still has all of its power the first time that it attacks with it. Ooh. So it's stuff like you can add first strike. Um, you can add probably not vigilant, but like you can add first strike in flying. black. You can probably add flying or intimidate in red. You can add menace. Yeah, for sure. Great. I love it. So there you go. Mortal upgrade. (laughs) Simic was the evolve mechanic, which we were both huge fans of. Yes. I just wanted to be evolve again. Me too. Run it back. I think it was excellent. I loved it. Again, once again, very simple. But uh, I've upped the, the, uh, I don't know what I want to say. I've upped it here. 
to experiment. And what this is, is it levels up your creature like Pokemon training, because I initially had it called train. (laughs) So, for example, pay X mana to uh, experiment on your creature, and now it has a new weird ability. Oh, yeah. Kind of like... um it's similar like, to the leveling up that you would do yeah. with what's that creature from Cube. Yeah. Kithkin, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Or that little Kithkin. Yeah. I was thinking of Face also of um, like Figure con- of Cons of Tarkir when it had um, Outlast. It reminds me a little bit of Outlast. Oh, yeah, where you would pay the mana, tap it, and then it would and get it a would plus get one, a counter, plus one counter. And sometimes it would also, if it, like... It had stuff where it's like all of your creatures with plus one plus one pa- counters have flying. Or yes, whatever. yes, yeah. I want it to be something a little bit stranger than that because it is a simic. Yes. So, for example, you've experimented and now this creature has the ability to ice something down on your opponent's side or yeah. something like that. Yeah, I think that's kind of cool. Um, I agree. I don't really know how they because it'd be pretty difficult because they would have different kinds of things that could change about them if they were experimented on. Yeah. Anyway. What do you think about Simic? Okay, mine is called Influx. Ooh, that's great. Um, and it's kind of like, not the double-sided cards, but do you remember the the flip cards that were like, uh, I want to say they're from Kamigawa Block, and at the top, it's like one thing, and if you fulfill a requirement, you like turn it around. Yes. And now it's the other thing. Yeah. It's like that. So it's a creature that it's going to be one of two things. And it's like formatted the same way where it like it comes into play and there's like the top of the card. Yeah. But it, it has the ability to, to like turn, turn around. It. Yep. Exactly. Um, and they just ha- they both have requirements on your upkeep that determine which side it's going to be on. Ooh. And the requirements for each one can be different where it's just like, oh, if you have um, I don't know if it's like if you have three or more creatures in play twist it yeah and then like that side will read if you have fewer than if you have two or fewer creatures in play twist it so it's like every every time it's checking so it's constantly (gasps) in flux i love it very Um, on your upkeep is what it checks (laughs) all right moving on to azorius detain was our mechanic uh last time around where a creature was iced down or whatever for a turn yeah Um, it wasn't tapped but i think it just yes that's right it couldn't do anything yeah so I've, <laughs> this one's ridiculous and my worst one of creation of all. It's called the greater good. And uh, what happens is your creature comes in and it, it exiles your opponent's creatures much like suspend would. Mm-hmm. And when they return to the battlefield, the Azorius creature that had greater good on it dies. Wow. So this is like still trying to play with the Azorius um, law and order mechanic. But at the same time, it's a little bit blue uh, with the bouncing and uh, so it'd be like a very temple oriented guild. Yeah. Anyway, I don't think that's a good idea, but what do you <laughs> what do you have for our Azorius friends? Um Great Sphinx's question. Revelation reprint. Sphinx's Revelation. <laughs> exactly. Um lockdown. Okay, lockdown. Which is where um, creatures with lockdown, you can tap a number of them that equal the power of Ooh. the creature that you're trying to lock down. Yeah. And it essentially detains it where until it's the, your next turn, it can't attack or block. Oh, so you need like, you need the group of the soldiers to be like, exactly. So if you have like a two, two and a one, one that both have, um, lockdown on them. Yeah. Uh, you can be like, okay. And your opponent has a three, three. You can be like, okay, I'm going to lock Boom. down, lock down. Yeah, this one. And then you have another creature that can, like, attack into it or whatever. Love it. Yeah. Love I can't it. decide. I think it might be... That's a good keyword, by, by the way. I'm trying to decide if it's you can only activate it as a sorcery or if it's an instant ability. Uh, it's we, pretty good. I think that's something that you'd have to, like... You'd have to test it yeah. out a couple of times to be like, is it too good if you can activate it at instant speed? Yeah. Because I don't know. So... All right, up next, Gruul Smash. I put Bolas <laughs> next to them because we already had this fight. <laughs> yep, we sure did. Well, you know, well, we will remain in disagreement. And uh, last set, which was Gate Crash, they had Blood Rush, where you could discard to give creature plus X plus X. Um, and instead, this time around, I made a new mechanic called Land Surge, mm-hmm. which I'm pretty proud of that name. And this is broken AF, but what it is is certain creatures can be played as lands and later awaken as worse versions of themselves. Oh, yeah. Kind of like that one creature. Which one? From 
Uh, it's from the most recent Commander set. Okay. It's the sleeping. It's the sleeping friend. Oh, the, the sleeping s- Leviathan yes, yes, situation. Yes. Yeah, where it's a bunch of islands and it com- then it comes out as a yeah. twelve twelve. Yes. And that in that case, it's a very good creature. Yeah. But the reason I wanted to make it bad was because uh, I feel like this is really good. And green and red really wants to ramp. Yeah. And so you can play your creature as your land, help yourself ramp. But I didn't want it to get out of control. So you have to make the decision. It's also a tougher decision. Do you want to, you know, cross your fingers, hope you make your land drops and play your good creature? Or do you want to play it now as a land and help you play your other stuff? And then later you can have it come come back, awaken as a land be- because of its time living as a mountain or a forest. It is, <laughs> it not, is it now it sucks. Is worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Interesting. You know, I really... I'm trying to think of it, but like Blood Rush is such a gruel. Oh, it's perfect. It's so solidly gruel. Very gruel. Which is great. Um, and I'm tr- like having a hard time coming up with anything that is like even com- like comparatively can, okay. Yeah. yeah anything that can tough. compare with that because it's so good. And you know, maybe some of these mechanics just like come yours, back. Yours is, I think that yours is good, but the problem is, is that it's too green and it's not red. Yeah, that's a good point. Right? Like, it's a super interesting one. It's Are almost we... kind of Simic. Like, that that other one that we're thinking of is blue-green, and it feels kind of blue-green to me. Yeah. Where green is like, I'm here's I'm ramping these land drops, and then blue is like, also, I'm going to transform it into something weird and different. Sure. Maybe it doesn't come back as a creature. Mm-hmm. Maybe you sacrifice that land, and it deals two. Okay, like a Rami Nap Ruin yeah, situation. Yeah, Because that card wasn't too busted. <laughs> Here you go, Red Dex. We yeah. got you some another present for Crimbus. Like a, a land that you can later use as a combat trick on a creature. Yeah. So Blood Rush, but for land. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. You know, I'll <sighs> be so spooked if any of these are right. Yeah. Same. Ooh. I don't have a good one for girl. Well, okay. We together made a pretty good one, I think. Yeah. With Land Surge. And that makes Land Surge, Land Spark. What? I'm trying to name it now to put a little oh. bit more red in it. Hmm. Let me think about this. Lance Park sounds really cool. Yeah. But so did Land Surge. Anyway, <sighs> call us Wizards of the Coast. Obviously, our design skills are on point. Do you want to yes. make any general predictions for the set? Like, I remember when we predicted. Well, like, we made several about pirate, who pirate is and is not. <laughs> several about yeah, who is and is that. not bolus. We did that, yeah. <laughs> Um, what if Kaya assassinates Bolas? I could see that happening. That's my dream. She's got. There we go. That's my dream. The history. Yeah. She knows what she's Also, doing. it makes so much sense that she's Orzov because she was a ghost assassin before, wasn't she? Yes. And now Orzov is the ghost council. Yes. She's there to tear that place up from the inside out. <laughs> Great. I'm so excited for Ravnica Allegiance just talking about this. These guilds are so good. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Oh, I got to say it. Allegiance got the good guilds. Yeah. Okay. Wait. I hadn't. I hadn't said what would happen with Orzov assassinate. Now yeah? I'm thinking of it. Okay. <laughs> what do you got? Hit me. Oh no. I'm just thinking of something along the lines of like, they're they're obviously worst creatures, but when okay if they have assassinate, which is where when they die, yeah, they come back once as a ghost creature for a turn. <laughs> You know what this reminds me of? Haunt. Yeah, I know. Haunt was not oh, was boy. not a friendly mechanic. We went we had an episode where we went through all these old mechanics. We did it over the course of like three or four episodes. Because there were so many of them. One was called Haunt, and it was real and it was so weird. It was very weird. But this one I'm talking about where it's like, okay, um, you attack and I block and my creature dies. And it comes back. And then it as comes a back ghost. as like a little spirit copy of itself, <laughs> but only for a turn. Only for a turn. Ooh, that's true. Tricky. And every time, yeah. So like on on each end step, um, you exile any little, uh, you know, little spirits that didn't come into play this turn. Oh, I like it. All right. So um, there you go. That's mine. Mark it down. Those are some of our predictions for Ravnica Allegiance. They're definitely, <laughs> They're definitely, very solid. Coming true. Definitely coming true. playing recently and we're like hey yeah. you know what 
things have shifted some since the beginning. Absolutely. For instance, there was definitely a period towards the kind of beginning of this draft format when everyone was just like, you can draft Boros. Yeah. And you can just, a lot of times you can force Boros. Force. And you will, yeah, you will have a, a great deck and Boros is just smashing. Yeah. I think that that is less true now. Why do you think that? Because I think that people who are not playing Boros are coming better prepared to beat those decks. Yeah, that's a good point. They know now. They're just like, I'm not going to lose to you playing one drop, two drop, three drop. Yeah. I will kill your fresh faced recruits. Exactly. For instance, in I've been main decking Mephitic Vapors and there's just like my first two rounds of the most recent draft that I did. I just won on the spot on like turn three because my Five opponent went them. exactly. I would get three. I would regularly get three for ones off of Mephitic Vapors, and it's just like, you're not coming back from that. Yeah, people are ready now for you, Boros. Exactly. You have a target on your back, and its name is Mephitic Vapors. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's also one of my big recommendations, is that if you're yeah. in black, pick up a copy of that sometime during the draft. You You'll usually can. One. Yeah. Um, and just put it in your main deck, because you are going to win games. And do you know what's amazing to me? Is that people will then not board out those cards. Well, they can't, right? That's true. It's all that their deck is. It's one, it's one note. So it's just like in game one, it, it's like I three for one you with Mephitic Vapors. And then the next game, like maybe you're trying to be prepared and I only two for one you. But guess <laughs> what? That's like just as good. This is my Boros thought. I've discovered one of my favorite decks to draft. Oh, yeah. With Boros. And it's big Boros. So um, I'm drafting cards like Swath Cutter Giant. A couple yeah. of those. I'm drafting uh, Gates in my Boros deck. And, and then I'm playing, uh, what is it called? The creature, the 3-3 three, three that gets double strike. Yeah. Um, gate. Gosh, why can't I remember? Oh, I play so Sentinel many of it. Yeah. Or, who knows? Like Gatewatch Sentinel. You gate know what it is. Sentinel, like that. You can put like three of those in your deck. And... Those are kind of unbeatable. They're honestly. so good. So if you're drafting this deck correctly, which is you're not playing any of those early creatures. You need those gates. You need that the one. you definitely need the gates and you can play Boros lock it in this deck, too, because you really need to be able to make sure you hit your fifth and sixth yeah. mana. Otherwise, you're not going to win. Um, you have to get the inescapable blaze for inescapable sure. Blaze. Yes. So good. I also had a lot of success with the big Boros deck. I, I think it's great. So I do think that is one of the ways that that deck is trending now to beat um, stuff like yeah. Demir that's coming ready for the small creature decks. And it's like, okay, but what if I play a 5-5 five, five that deals one damage to everything when it attacks? Right. Guess what? Goodbye, all your birds from Murmuring Mystic. Bye, birds! Yeah, and, like, you can play your boar in this. You're just getting beefier, basically. Yeah. And you've got some really good top end, too. Yeah, and I feel like in those decks, I've also been going a little bit harder on removal. Yeah. Where it's, like, in Big Boros, it's like, I will pick up two copies of luminous bonds at least plus you know like the um command the storm which deals five oh, to yeah. something inescapable blaze which deals six so it's like some of those i'm hoping to point at face but like there's i have you know at least three removal spells and you because can play... i am waiting longer to win the game yes you can play cosmotronic wave yeah as a mephitic vapors yeah. in this build if you're facing a, an aggressive boros deck on the quote-unquote mirror match so I think that's pretty cool. So that's like one of my new favorite decks. My other new favorite deck yeah. is Golgari. Yeah, that's been, I Woo. saw an interesting, um, I think Toby Henke, who works for coverage yeah. um, and does a lot of like math based stuff, put up some articles um, that were looking at the draft decks from one of the most recent limited GPs. And a lot of the 3 decks from day two were Golgari. I mean, that's what Eduardo Sajglik said when he won the GP. He's like, I just drafted green because nobody else wanted it. Yeah. And now people know how to draft Golgari, which is mostly creatures. Yeah. You need so many to make this work. And I'm saying you got to really pick where you're putting your removal spells in. I'm talking three pieces Four, and that is it. Yeah. No more. Because you need your creatures to be big and you need them to be in the yard. Yeah. There Affectionate Indrik, still an outstanding oh, card. Is so good. I love Affectionate Indrik. It's yeah. so good. And Erstwhile Trooper, which this card kind of like seems like a stinker, but it does exactly what you want to do in Golgari, which is it comes out on turn three. Which, yeah. And they can't really attack into it because you're like, fine, I'll discard my creature to make it a 4 4, eat your creature, and now I have something in the yard. For yeah. undergrowth, I think it's really fun. Yeah, for sure. I don't think it's the best, of course, but I do think it's better than we thought it was. It's certainly better than Celestia, which is a poo-poo platter. Yeah, for sure. Celestia, 
Here's the lesson on that. Still bad. Yeah, still bad. Has gone down to fifth. Do you know what? Anytime that I see, anytime I face a Celestia deck later on in the draft queue where it's like, I've won a couple of matches, I'm always just like, they have that 5-5 five, five angel. They have to have something like that, and right? And you know what? Every time I've been correct. Yeah. I'm just like, what is this deck? Light of it's the like, Legion. I'm going to wait for Light of the Legion. And every single time they have it, because I'm like, that's literally the only way this yeah. deck can win yeah. is they have to have that wild bomb. Yep. And as long as you're prepared for it, you're like, okay, I can deal with this fine. Yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> So remember, if you are later on and you've been winning a bunch of matches and all of a sudden you face Celestia, wait for that Light of the Legion because it is in their deck. <laughs> Do you know what I did the other day? I drafted five color gates Ooh. because I was just like, I'm bored. What should I draft? Yeah. I know. Five color nonsense. And the truth of the matter was, it was not uh, that difficult to yeah. um, stabilize pretty early and have most of my mana that I needed in play. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that big of a disaster at all. I thought yeah. it was going to be a total train wreck. It really wasn't. In one of the rounds, I lost to a very cool deck, which was Is It Burning Me Out with the 04 Wall? Nice. Ele electrostatic field. That's awesome. It was great. I couldn't even be mad. The deck was awesome. It played Thousand Year Storm as well. Um, what? And just yes. killed me with those yes. 04 walls. And I was like, this deck is a work of art. I'm not angry. Mine was like a hot garbage pile that like did okay. But yours is great. Put it on the wall of the Met. <laughs> I will go see it. Yeah. That was really cool. So drag that deck. Welcome to our new exhibit at the Met. <laughs> It's really cool magic decks. If works, of, works of art in the magic world. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Is it? I am like down on more than I was at the beginning. Um, I do think that there are still some very good builds of is it? Yeah. But I think that it um, it's a little bit harder these days because people are just prepared. Right. Yeah. In the early days, one of is its biggest strengths was that people weren't ready for you to be like Sonic. Exactly. Like Sonic Assault. On your end step, like on my turn, attack with everything, Sonic Assault again, like direct current, direct current, you're dead. Yeah, exactly. Um, and now people are a little bit more like wary of that sort of thing. People so. all overall are more ready for your shenanigans. Yes. So you've got to be ready for them being ready for your shenanigans. Shenanigans you know can't I mean? be the only trick up your sleeve. <laughs> you need more than shenanigans <laughs> to win a draft. You need counter shenanigans. That's right. You need counter shenanigans. Oh, gosh, I forgot to mention, like, this, this person also was very, very smart and brought in, a, like, a, two disdainful strokes out of the sideboard. Smart. And a devious cover-up. I have now been playing disdainful song. stroke main deck also. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's just enough reasons to do it, I think. But All anyway, right. yeah, there you go. There's your updated draft primer if you've got some free time to head back into Guilds of Ravnica draft coming up this month. It's still super fun. And if you haven't tried out Big Boros, New Golgari, is it burn you out? Yes. <laughs> These are three of my, like, weird suggestions. Yeah. Five Color Gates. That's another fun one. Mine is just... Do you know, get ready to main deck Mephitic Vapors and really get <laughs> some people. Because it is so satisfying. Yeah, it is. Huh, nice. <laughs> game yes <laughs> this is called 185 it's based on an old joke 185 blanks walk into a bar the bartender says i'm sorry we're closed and the blanks say punch punchline so uh we've just cracked open a new guilds of ravnica pack here okay i'm gonna mix I, these around even though it doesn't matter this is a new one so this, this is... might be very bad everybody i need yeah. you to be very prepared for okay this to be bad okay so i'm gonna start things off with <laughs> 185 artful takedowns. Uh huh. <laughs> Which is a great magic card. Walk into a bar and the bartender's like, we're closed. And the artful takedowns is like, oh, that's super, that's super fine. I'm really okay with that. By the way, you're ugly. Artful takedown. <laughs> It wasn't very was artful. It, artful it wasn't very okay. artful. But, but it was a takedown. <laughs> okay. Um, 185 burglar rats walk into a bar Ooh. and the bartender's like, I'm sorry, we're closed. And the burglar rats are like, wait, is this a trap? <laughs> Yay. Okay. Uh, oh, God. 185 pigless gorgons walk into a bar and the bartender's like, we're closed, but you're in luck. Our kitchen is still open. And, uh, the pitiless gorgons are like, actually, I just want a martini, but um, the, with the olive, can you take the pit out of it? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, 185 
fresh faced recruit walk into Ooh. a bar and the bartender is like, I'm sorry, we're and then he, the fresh faced recruit smacks him across, Ooh. like punches him out because they have first strike. <laughs> If these sound like horrible dad jokes to you, you're welcome. Yeah. Uh, 185 piston fist cyclops walk into a bar and the bartender is like, sorry, piston fist cyclops, we're closed. And the piston fist cyclops is like, I, I'm, <laughs> I don't know what they're like. They're like, oh, um, uh, 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 my car is broken. You have to fix the piston. No, can't. I couldn't get there with okay. that one. Okay. Died this on one's the table. so bad. Great. Okay, 185 luminous bonds walk Ooh. into a bar. The bartender set, bartender pulls out like a little squirt bottle and starts misting them. And the, the luminous bonds are like, what's going on? And the bartender was like, oh, sorry, I thought you were luminous fronds. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, fronds like a plant. Okay. Yeah, like the plant. <laughs> so he was like watering them. Okay, 185 flight of the equinauts walk into the bar. The bartender's like, sorry, we're closed. And the flight of the equinauts is like, oh, sorry, we just we just want, you know, some something savory to munch on. And the bartender's like, all right, I get it, I get it. I've got some snacks under the bar and brings out, you know, a pile of, a pile, a bowl of like peanuts and a bowl of like almonds and a bowl of like, uh, you know, I don't know, walnuts. And the flight of the equinauts is like, this is great. They're all equal nuts. <laughs> That one hurt. Um, Ooh, I got a rare. Okay, 185 street riots walk into a bar. <laughs> and the bartender's like, I'm sorry, we're closed. And the street riots are like, can you please just stay up for a little bit? Like, stay open a little bit longer. And the bartender is like, fine, but like, I'm going to need advanced pavement from you. <laughs> Yay! Okay, uh, 185 deafening clarions walk into a bar, and the bartender's like, sorry, we're closed. And the deafening clarions like, we want a bar! <laughs> sorry about your ears, everyone. That's a rare. Um, mm. uh, 185 <laughs> smelt ward minotaurs try to walk into a bar, but the bouncer is like, I'm sorry, this place is closed. And in an instant, the smelt more minotaur is like, you can't block me from going nice, in there. Nice, nice. 185 Rubble Belt Boars walk into the bar. The bar just says, sorry, we're closed. And the Rubble Belt Boar is like, it's fine. I didn't tusk you to be open anyway. Trust. Oh, God. <laughs> so bad. Um, hmm. Oh, gosh. I... These are both bad. Oh, well, I'm did you hear thinking. some of mine? <laughs> <laughs> I think they couldn't even be called an attempt at a joke. Um, I, I have a candlelight vigil here. So 185 candlelight vigils walk into the bar and the bartender's like, sorry, we're closed. And the candlelight vigil's like, that's okay. We'll wait. Um, okay. The 185 caller the culprits walk into a bar in Colorado and the bartender is like, I'm sorry, we're closed. Um, and, uh, ev everyone, the call of the culprit is like, there's a lot of people in here and we know that they just committed a heist. <laughs> Cause, Cause they're high. Cause they're high. Heist. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, well, you, you know, there you go. That's 185. That's what 185 and, uh, Defton Clarion here is going to be headed off to somebody who enters our Gleam giveaway for the month of december plus a lot of all other awesome prizes from our sponsors card kingdom ultra pro and also our very own selves so go and uh, enter that contest a couple of ways to enter click on the gleam link in the show notes yeah. or in the text below the video on youtube <laughs> that is our show before we go one more reminder that this before this friday is your only chance ever yes. to order those glhf 
Pro Team hoodies. We'll put a link in the show notes to the form that you can fill out there. Remember to check out our streams this week on twitch.tv slash glhfmagic and go follow us now so you can be alerted as to when we're going to start streaming. We're also on Twitter at glhfmagic and Facebook slash glhfmagic and there's a link on our Facebook page to join our new group that we've created which will better help you be aware of when we post new content because Facebook is known for burying stuff from organizations which is what we are. So if you're a member of the group, it won't bury it in your timeline and you'll be able to see it. So you can go and request to join the group and I'm approving a request as fast as I can, but uh, go check that out if Facebook is your social media of choice. We're also on Instagram at GLHF Magic. If you like just photos and none of the words, there you go. Instagram. We've got, we've got you covered on all across all social media. Uh, yes. Big thanks once again to everybody who supports us on patreon.com slash GLHF Magic. If you're not a supporter yet, please consider it uh, for this final month of the year. Think of it as your holiday gift to us. We would massively appreciate it. And uh, hopefully it'll make you feel good too, supporting things that you care about. That's right. And thank you once again to our sponsors, cardkingdom.com slash GLHF and Ultra Pro. You can get all of their sweet stuff at Card Kingdom. Wonderful gifts for the holidays. If you've got a magic player in your life that you don't know what to get them yet, they have all kinds of amazing arts uh, on all of their play mats and deck boxes. So there's something out there for everybody. Yeah, and coming up next week is going to be a super special episode live in quotes. <laughs> it's live when we record it. So. Yeah, it happens when it's happening <laughs> when we're doing it. From Spain! Wow. Yeah. I'm going to be very tired. We may not be coherent, but you know, those we'll have been try our best. fairly popular episodes. The le yeah. less coherent we are, the more people like them. I think it's correlative. Well. Anyway, we'll find out. Yeah, we're going to be... It's causation. Causation? What's correlation? Correlation just means that the two things, like you see them tracking yeah. together, but you're like, maybe it's just happening for no reason. And cor that's correlation. So you don't, it doesn't like, say why it's happening. Exactly. Okay. Correlation is like saying like these two things show the same kind of trend. So they might be linked. And causation's like for sure. Causation says one of these things being higher tracks to the, like causes I the see. other thing to be higher. Okay. Well, either way. We're going to be in Spain for the World Magic Cup. Yeah. And so we're going to be recording our episode from Spain, hopefully with some special guests, too, from That's coverage. That's right. So uh, make sure to check out our episode next week. It's going to be pretty cool. And the World Magic Cup coming up, too, which is one of my favorite magic tournaments of the whole year. It's just really fun. All right. Yeah, that's our episode, you know. See you all around. Good luck. High five. <laughs> <laughs>